Hey guys, KP Jax here. Today we are actually taking a look at an old U.S. Navy submarine, the USS Nautilus. It is the fourth U.S. Navy ship to have the name Nautilus. Um, it's also from the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, back in 1951, Congress authorized a nuclear power submarine to be created for the Navy. Um, everything that we had back then was either running steam or diesel, and um, both are pretty loud, pretty noisy. And when you're hunting ships uh, who use sonar, you know, different things like that, and you want to get an advantage, you can't be noisy. So they authorized this um, test ship basically to be built. And uh, it was planned and personally supervised by Admiral... Hyman Rickover, uh, he's been called the father of the nuclear navy, and since 2007, uh, that program had produced uh, 200 nuclear-powered submarines, 23 nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and cruisers. Many of those are decommissioned, but there are definitely many, many more ships being created. Now, the Nautilus was commissioned first September 30th, 1954, and it was decommissioned March 3rd, 1980. Its first commanding officer was Commander Eugene P. Wilkinson, United States Navy. Back in 1983, Connecticut named the Nautilus their official ship. Um, and since it was decommissioned in 1980, it was turned into a museum. It currently costs about $6 million a year to run and brings in over 250,000 visitors a year. Uh, in 2004, she became part of the American Nuclear Society uh, and was considered to be a national landmark. So a little bit about the Nautilus. Uh, she's currently a museum in Groton, Connecticut. Uh, when she was surfaced, she was 3,533 tons. When she was submerged, she was 4,092 tons, and that's because they have to fill the ballast tanks with water. She's 320 feet long, 28 feet wide, and 26 feet deep. She was first built with a submarine thermal reactor, which was later designed uh, to be a pressurized water reactor. I believe it was called the SP-2. Well, why'd they go nuclear? Well, everything was diesel uh, back then. It was very loud, um, used a lot of fuel, and a hard to keep quiet. Nuclear was considered to be emissionless, and it actually used no air, which is great when you're on a sub because you don't need to surface or raise a snorkel to run your equipment. Uh, she had two shafts. She went a top speed of about 23 knots about 26 miles an hour. She had a um, 13 officer crew, or uh, 13 officers in her crew, and 92 enlisted people, uh, enlisted men, and uh, she had six torpedo tubes. Nautilus is important because during this time, we were in the Cold War. Russia had just launched Sputnik, and they were threatening us with ICBMs, so we had come up with a new mission or a new weapon called SLBMs, meaning submarine launch ballistic missiles. Um, she was the first nuclear powered uh, vessel of anybody. Nobody else had a nuclear powered ship. Um, her, first for, her first voyage was uh, just over 1,300 miles under the uh, polar pack of ice up, up in the North Pole. Uh, her shakedown, which is like her initial run to make sure nothing's really wrong, left New London, Connecticut to San Juan, Puerto Rico, just over 1,381 miles. She completed it in about 90 hours. Uh, she was the first ship to, um, or the first watercraft to reach the geographic North Pole submerged. Uh, towards the end of her service, though, she um, she got noisy. Um, you know, just her superstructure and um, the hole and everything, it just vibrated um, too much that sonar became ineffective at more than four knots, which, you know, going along at four miles an hour is really nothing. So that's why she ended up um, being decommissioned. Um, in 1958, she was part of Operation Sunshine, uh, which uh, is when she went up to the North Pole and uh, the reason why we went to the North Pole with a submarine was to basically gain credibility for the uh, submarine-launched ballistic missiles weapon system that we were trying to come out with. So as you can see, taking a look at the Nautilus, there is not a lot of space. And submarines really haven't changed that much when it comes to space. Uh, two years ago, I was able to get on board the USS Mississippi, which I'll tell you, that is a pretty awesome ship. So when we boarded the Mississippi, it was just out of 
pure luck. We just happened to go down the pier and ask, hey, are you giving a tour? And I was with a retired chief at the time, so that's why I was able to do it. Uh, I myself am ex-Navy, didn't retire, but I, I was an engine man um, in the Navy, second class petty officer. So the Mississippi was actually commissioned in 2012. So this was a brand new, newly delivered ship. $2.6 billion cost. The Mississippi is about 70,000 tons. She is 100, or she's 377 feet long, 34 feet wide, goes 25 knots, they're allowed to tell us. And um, as you can see, the, the size isn't really that much different. A little bit longer, a little bit wider. Um, test depth, what they're allowed to tell us is about 800 feet. And their complement is about 30, 132 officers and men on the ship. I recommend that everybody learn about your military, ships, and exactly what they do. It's a great part of our history. That boy could have been a dancer, walk tight wise with no net. Yeah, he could have been so many things had he and his fate ever met. Ah, but standing there between them was a crowd inclined to scream out, you're not like us. Yeah, Katie was a cutie pie with hair of sunshine.